We are joined by Dr. Ya Daniel Jurgen for a very special conversation here right now. Dr. Jurgen, hi. Thank you so much for joining us. First of all, uh, it's an inaugural India Energy Forum by Sarah Week in India this time around. What brings you to India and what has been the feedback for the conference? Uh, India has really become so crucial in the world energy scene. Uh, so many companies, countries around the world are focused on what's happening in India because of its economic growth and its growth of energy. And at the same time, uh, India is very much looking to the outside world in terms of integration, in terms of technology, in terms of flows of trade, in terms of India being a source of technology for the global energy industry. So all of that made this very timely to have Sarah Week uh, uh, here in India. And you have some very big names in attendance and that clearly shows that energy, uh, India is becoming a very strong hub here. But going forward, of course, the demand has almost doubled in last decade or something. What is your sense on where will the new demand come in from India? Well, I think the new demand comes from India from uh, continued economic growth. Our own numbers next year show India growing at 7.5%. That means growth in use of energy all across the economy, industry and so forth, and of course in transportation. Mm -hmm. What is your sense on the India's policies and reforms when it comes to energy? Because it has been quite a bit since this government has come in. How have you read into that and how would you look at the sector in light of that? I think India in the last few years has embarked on a big policy of reform and it's beginning to show real results because what the reform is doing, India needs investment in energy and the old system simply was not going to get a, that investment made. And, and you see the interest now that comes from companies around the world as well as Indian companies to make investment and without the reforms, without predictability, without some sense of, of sanctity of contracts and so forth, uh, this wouldn't happen. So India, just the fact that we have so many people from around the world coming to this conference who are very interested in what's happening in India uh, shows the impact of the reforms. Well, let's talk about the you know, global markets and the geopolitics, etc. And we have seen so many statements. There has been war of words, not a, you know, b between the oil producers as per se, but that clearly has impacted the crude oil prices. When we look forward, how much of this would continue to impact prices? I think the big change that occurred was the agreement a little over, uh, almost a year ago, between OPEC okay. and non-OPEC, and that had never happened before. In fact, uh, non-OPEC countries led by Russia indicated they wanted nothing to do with an agreement. And so this turned out to be a historic agreement. There have certainly been ups and downs since then, mm -hmm. but it's, it's at the same time sent some message about stability, stabilization in the market. And I think uh, you're seeing spending ticking up now uh, in response to that. Of course, people say, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. and the real issue here is that the market was so much out of balance in uh, 2014 that it just takes a long time to get back into balance and we're maybe halfway, three quarters way there. And so this rebalancing will continue to go on through 2018. Also, how would you look at the U.S. shale output now? Because many brokerages, big banks are now betting on how it seems to be uh, topping off at these current levels. Uh, would you say we are closer to that? And that I, an I think from U.S. shale has been the, really the dynamic new element in the world oil market. And for a couple of years, people were in denial about it, but it's real, it's significant, but it's still only about 5% of the total market. Mm -hmm. And this year, we see these shale producers, even with lower prices, adding about a million barrels a day, almost a million barrels a day of new supply because they become more efficient, because costs are down, because they've pushed the technology. We think next year, we're not gonna see anywhere near that type of growth, more likely, 250 to 500,000 barrels a day. But uh, shale now is an important part of the industry and it's also the most sensitive to price because if you do a big multi-billion dollar project it unfolds over five or 10 years. But here you can make a decision to drill and 90 days later you'll have oil. So it's a, it's a different kind of dynamic. Much of the demand numbers, when you uh, do that math in the global markets, much of the demand growth seems to be coming out of Asia. If within Asia as well, do you think India stands in a very sweet spot when it comes to uh, consuming? Well, I think India is, uh, you know, people used to look at just China and say that's the growth. Now they say it's India and China, and they're maybe roughly the same. And India has so much more potential because its economy is going to uh, grow 
at a rapid rate, and that's going to be more demand. And also, it's very interesting, if you compare the demographics of China and uh, India, India's demographics are much more favorable because it has such a large young population, the new generation and so forth, and that's going to be a source of economic growth, and that also means more energy demand. Another thing on debate which has been very high in the recent days, of course, has been electric vehicles. And those reports somehow have put some pressure on the crude oil prices. Would you say it's just too much speculation right now and those numbers are too far, too few to react to? We, um, certainly electric vehicles is going to be one of the, you know, topics here at the Sierra Week conference. And we've spent the last year doing a study called Reinventing the Wheel, tr looking at it. And so we do see that there's going to be more electrification in the automobile fleet, but some of the estimates that are out there are way too exaggerated because mm. you're talking about a whole system, a whole ecosystem. You need reliable electricity supplies, for instance. You need chargers. And so I think there are targets out there, uh, but I think it's going to be slower to see this large-scale penetration, uh, at least into four-wheeled vehicles. So it's got growth. Automakers are looking at it. A lot of it's being driven by governor, government policy, but something mm. as big as the automobile ecosystem is not going to change overnight or even in a couple of years. So uh, it's going to take time, and we'll see more electric vehicles by 2040. We'll see a lot more than we are today, but we'll still see a lot of gasoline-powered vehicles. Mm. You know, you spoke about India, and you said on how uh, positive everybody seems to be on growth here. What is your sense, five years, ten years down the line, where do you see India's consumption growth when it comes to crude? And how would you look at, want to look at the future policies here? Well, I think that India could, you know, its oil consumption could double from where it is today. And I think that has put a premium again on opening up the upstream, bringing in investment from Indian companies and from non-Indian companies into the upstream to keep to modulate that uh, growth in demand uh, being met exclusively by uh, imports. And I think India has gone through cycles, economic cycles, which have demonstrated the risks of that because the oil price is, is a cyclical price. It's not a constant price. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's a, the growth trajectory of the country, the make it in India trajectory, says that you also need to develop domestic energy sources all across the spectrum and that in turn leads you back to the reform that encourages the investment that you need to bring the supplies domestically as well as uh, imported. Mm. Let's talk about the crude oil prices also then and it has been very very volatile. I, I mean two to three percent of a move on a daily basis really seems to be becoming a regime right now. What is your sense on where are we headed in sense of global demand supply as well prices? Well I think there are two closely related but different subjects. Global supply and demand, we can see the balance is improving and will continue to improve over 2018. This year, we're at the high end. We see world oil demand growing at 1.8 million barrels a day, which is higher than the consensus. And I think that reflects uh, economic growth around the world, where this year will be 3.1 percent, next year 3.2 percent. So that's supply and demand. Okay. But supply and demand does not change from day to day, but the oil price can change from day to day. And I think that's demonstrated that the role of the financial markets uh, and the kind of perceptions of hedge funds and how they see supply and demand and they were very bearish now they become less bearish and somewhat more confident and you see prices higher I think one of the great frustrations for the oil producers for the oil companies is they see what's happening supply and demand but over here is this other thing called the financial markets that have such an influence at least in the short term on price well, what side are you bending? Is it 45? Is it 65? Where are well, you? Well, I, I think that the you know we've been saying for the last uh, year or so that we seem to be in a 40 to 60 dollar range. Uh, recently, we've been closer to 60, uh, somewhere above 60, 65 dollars, and you really start activity up again in the uh, shale producers and the balance changes. Mm -hmm. I think also uh, the oil exporting countries now look back on those high prices that seem to be the natural order of things, the $100 a barrel, as actually an aberration and a mistake because in terms of what it costs them in demand and so forth. And so uh, unless you have some crisis coming from somewhere else that really causes a, some kind of disruption, I think we're going to be in a more moderate range and, you know, maybe the 40 to 60, maybe it'll go somewhat over $60, but but we're not going to have an explosive upside.
And that's all that we have from Sarah Week today, but we will get you more faces, more voices in the day tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.